Hello friends, 2020 has been an incredible year. Friends, this year has presented many challenges. You and I have witnessed the downfall in the economy and in certain cases, people have been stressed out with the high levels of work from home that they've had to do this year. Now there's no doubt that the events of this year will have big implications on the trends that IT and DevOps as a whole will go through into FY21. And here we are in this video, I'm gonna to talk to you about the DevOps uh, predictions for year 2021. Stay tuned. Hello and welcome to my channel, Azure DevOps TV. If you're here the first time, I would urge you to go and click the subscribe button and then the bell icon to avoid missing out on any video notifications. I usually post videos on Azure DevOps, industry trends, IT, and, and if there's a video that you want to listen to uh, or a topic you're interested in, then please let me know via the comment section and I'll be more than happy to create it for you. Cloud centricity has become the number one forecasted trend for DevOps in 2021. Now, it should not come to you as a surprise that the cloud consumption in the year 2020 has accelerated dramatically. A lot of it, this is down to the events of the pandemic itself, where organizations had to accelerate their journey to the cloud and organizations that had already invested in the cloud started rotating more into the cloud native technologies to get more optimization and value on their returns from their cloud investments. Now, 2020 has seen a tremendous uptick in cloud and this is only expected to grow into FY21 with uh, a forecast of 295 billion being spent globally on the cloud business. Now imagine the kind of, um, you know, the scale of this investment and what this would translate into for software development trends, which will lead onto the trends of DevOps itself. You know, with more cloud native technologies being made available, with the platform being more managed uh, by the cloud providers themselves, and the developers now only needing to focus more on the value part, which is creating the application itself, the DevOps tool chains and uh, the DevOps pipelines would need to cater more uh, towards the cloud native technologies. Containers would be at the heart of this, Kubernetes would dominate the container sector, no doubt, but cloud centricity is a space to watch out for in FY21. Moving on to the next one, next on that list, is prioritization of edge computing. Edge computing becomes mainstream. You know, we all have connected devices that are always generating events uh, and that are always generating data. And the intelligence of the cloud and its capabilities start to light up experiences that we uh, you offer us more uh, personalized uh, experiences on our devices, uh, ever evolving, evergreen. Now imagine what this would mean for DevOps, trends of IoT, IoT computing, uh, you know, event-driven architectures, all of these need uh, the ability to release changes uh, for devices as well as softwares that run on those devices in near real time. And if you aren't yet accustomed to things like API management, API gateway, as your front door then uh, and uh, you know the iot suite then these are things that you should start to familiarize yourself with as all of these experiences would use them as the underpinning uh, within the azure cloud moving on the third in the list is hybrid computing hybrid by design let's not forget uh, we all assume that the work from home situation was only a temporary measure and would all go back to office one day very very soon in fact most of the organizations had hedged their bets that by the end of 2020, they would bring all of their employees back into the office. But as we all have witnessed that that trend has certainly stuck and it's more than realistic that that would became, become the behavior going forward where part of the workforce would probably be expected to work remotely. And what that means is now, you know, the work from home cannot be given a secondary class treatment where, you know, most of the times your ability to connect into the network uh, your office network, for example, can take three or four hops of connecting to VPN, securing the VPN, hopping onto a VDI before you can become productive. Hybrid by design means creating unified experiences that can run for employees within the office, but employees working remotely as well to enable more collaborative and cohesive workforce 
to empower employees to deliver value, keeping the developer caution in mind. And that's going to start to open up new industry uh, trends for DevOps as such. If you start to look at you know, Microsoft Azure offering of um, workspaces in the cloud, uh, yeah, akin to the traditional uh, virtual machine setups where you could provision a virtual machine and then you had to gear it up from scratch. Having workspaces uh, or desktops as they're called in the cloud, you just simply at the turn of a key have a fully provisioned machine for developers. Office 365, again, you know the experiences the Office 365 suite offers uh, and the tools and capabilities, all of that would start to show up uh, the need for more of DevOps. Uh, more unification across the board for that as well. Moving on, the next trend is enhancing self-service. Let's not forget a few years back when DevOps started to become mainstream that a lot of organizations confused it for uh, a capability where they perceived that by creating a DevOps team, they'll be able to solve and address most of their DevOps needs. What that translated into was more dysfunction and chaos within their organizations where devs and ops felt more disconnected than ever before. DevOps is not a capability, it's not a tool chain, it's a culmination of people process and an organizational change to empower developers, operational folks and security folks to work cohesively together to deliver more value to end customers faster, right? And keeping that in mind, DevOps needs to become self-service. Developers and operational folks need to be sharing the same tools, need to have uh, unified ways of self-creating CI-CD pipelines, self-provisioning developer environments, self-provisioning databases, self-provisioning uh, the infrastructure, and the underpinning to that becomes infrastructure as code. So if you haven't seen yet the Azure ARM BICEP or, or the Terraform Azure provider, then I would highly recommend you familiarize yourself with that because going forward, IAC would become uh, the enabler for a lot of these self-service quotients that we're talking about within self-service uh, as a trend for FY21. One more thing worth adding here is uh, your know, audit and logs. Traditionally, you know, audits and logs have very much been locked away from developers and operational folks. Um, and by centralizing these uh, capabilities within the cloud, you know, we start to offer a unified experience across the board for developers and operational folks, making them, giving them the ability to self-service all of their audit and logging requirements. You know, from being able to log on to a page search. Uh, you know, all of your uh, telemetry from across applications using correlation IDs to be able to pinpoint where actual fault within systems, distributed system lies is quite powerful. And we're going to start to see more and more of that uh, become pervasive as we uh, venture forward into the era of uh, cloud native and container native uh, technology implementation in FY21. Moving on. Uh, the next trend is decreased internal platform use. Now, how many times have you ended up working for a customer or for an organization that have their own DevOps tool? And sometimes you giggle a little bit to see, you know, what their internal DevOps tool is doing. And while on the surface, it might seem very fancy under the hood, it's a bunch of Windows services, moving files from one location to the other, aggregating um, spreadsheets uh, to provide, you know, project manager, level reports on the health status of how your projects are being delivered. Uh, all of these piecemeal uh, tools, you know, homegrown technologies and platforms add a lot of burden and overhead to developers uh, and they don't offer the, you know, native, slim, sleek experiences uh, with other tools either. So, you know, from surveys that have been conducted, it's becoming more prevalent that organizations are starting to give up this let's make the tool work or let's create a tool for ourselves and looking to adopt more of the industry leading tools and azure devops and github uh, atlassian uh, you know and all of these tools are certainly leading the market and are becoming the first choice for customers as a go-to rather than creating a tool by themselves moving on uh, the next trend is uh, autonomous it Automation isn't new into DevOps. Automation is the foundation for DevOps. But autonomous IT means lightening up experiences where the data that is being consumed by DevOps processes is able to bring the self-service, self-healing 
evergreen, ever evolving, uh, predictive nature to your pipelines and tools. So, for example, you know your pipeline is intelligent enough today to know what tasks it has in it. You know what those tasks are performing onto that pipeline. So, for example, if it's using a .NET compile, a .NET deploy, it's aware that it's performing certain actions of a build and a deploy on a .NET based application. And if the pipeline is to fail, having the data gathered from previous runs gives it enough intelligence to work out why the failure is happening in this case and put forward recommendations and even at times take it a step forward and mitigate the problem by itself. Now we will start to certainly see a lot of those experiences light up more and more within the tools that we use today and because of that we will almost set ourselves an ambition to start to surface those experiences for our customers that are using the tools that we're creating uh, for them. Uh, being able to self-heal infrastructure when things go wrong, at least provide a first level of resistance and, and resilience into that infrastructure, being able to fail over without people needing to handhold and handcraft the movement of infrastructure from one region to the other, are all experiences that we will start to see more and more in FY21. Last, but by no means the least, is collaborating for security. DevSecOps has become mainstream, no doubt. For DevOps to flourish in 2021, security needs to be an integral part of it. We can't pretend to go fast and jump over a cliff. We need the guardrails of security to protect us, to make sure that we stay within the confines and prevent ourselves from vulnerabilities and malicious attacks, which can take businesses down and literally fold them overnight as they get intruded uh, by hackers, right? And creating uh, security isn't one department's problem. It is something that needs to be pushed all the way left into the, the, de the developer pipeline, you know, where developers start to create code, keeping security in mind, the checks and bounds for security are run when the software is being created rather than being an afterthought, keeping performance, throughput, latency, and bringing those within the DevOps pipelines means that every line of code that gets written gets verified against these standards, gets verified against all known security vulnerabilities. So by the time we come to releasing our software, by the time we come to running our pipeline in production, all of these checks have consistently been run across all of these environments. And so by creating that um, you know, unique framework of security first mindset, you know, we will empower our developers to be delivering secure experiences for their customers uh, by offloading some of these responsibilities and automating them within the DevSecOps pipelines. So security, no doubt, uh, will we'll start to see more growth in, in 21. And you know, the tools and processes that live around it will also see uh, a kind of an evolution uh, going forward. The DevOps innovation will continue. Although some major developments and priorities have shifted this year, you know, some industries have suffered more than the others, every evolution has a revolution in it and every revolution follows an evolution. You know, one thing will continue to remain, that nothing can deter the human spirit for innovation. Organizations will have to continue pivoting in FY21. But these major DevOps trends will help to make this shift a little bit easier. And these are the seven DevOps predictions for 2021. I hope you enjoyed the video. Don't forget to click the subscribe button and the bell icon to get notifications when I post new videos. If you would like to, uh, a download copy of the presentation that I walked through in this video, tag five friends and I'd be more than happy to send a link to all five of you to download the video. Let's stay connected and thank you for watching the video. With this, I wish you all the best uh, for 2021 and hope you have a great celebration ending 2020. Signing off for this year, thank you very much. Bye-bye.